Hello everybody. Welcome to Dude with a Fork. My name is Ken. On today's episode of Ken Cook Stuff, um, I am making some mini French bread pizzas because I cannot find inexpensive French bread pizzas in the store anymore. But I was at Walmart, I saw some bread on clearance, and I thought, there we go. This is how we're going to get it done. So I grabbed a few other ingredients from Aldi, namely Italian sausage, which is probably the cheapest place to get it, and did it. So here's how we do it. All right, uh, so this is the bread I got. I went to Walmart. Um, the bakery section usually has a clearance area and they don't always have something there. Um, it, it depends on your local Walmart, I guess. Sometimes it goes quickly. So what, you, what we have here are white sub rolls, six count, fresh baked in store. These were packed on November 13th, best if used by November 17th. That's today. These were 348. Because it's the last day, they're reduced by half. So save $1.74, pay $1.74. So uh, there is no way I'm going to eat seven uh, of these mini subs in, in one day. But what I can do um, is split them in half and make mini French bread pizzas. And these mini sized ones fit great in the air fryer. I have a video showing you how I cooked frozen uh, um, French bread pizzas in the air fryer and they turn out great. So our first step here is going to be to cut these in half. So I'm going to grab a cutting board and a knife and show you just that. All right, so here's our bread. Here's our cutting board. I'm going to use uh, this serrated knife. I, I don't know if I've shown you these before. I bought these as a set. as one of those really like quick deals at, at Best Buy. And uh, they actually are, are, are pretty decent knives. So um, for the price I paid. So I'm going to get these bad boys open up and see exactly what we're dealing with here because I've never had these before. All right, so we'll just take out the top layer. Oh, oh, okay, so that's the top and that's the top. They, they flip them to the bottoms inside. So we're going to deal with one of these at a time and all I'm going to do, looks like this middle one got kind of crushed. So I don't know if they're already split. They are not. He's a little flat, so he might just get eaten tonight. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do is take our knife and just split this guy this way as best we can. Now, when you buy French bread pizzas frozen in the store, I do believe you only get the tops. I'm not quite sure what they're doing with the bottoms, but um, probably turning them into breadcrumbs. So there we go. So here we have our two surfaces. This is what it looks like. Okay, this looks great. Now, if I put pizza sauce on this surface uh, and then put this in the freezer, that pizza sauce is just going to soak right into this bread and make it soggy. Uh, if you're making a sandwich, um, you can put something that's oil based on here to prevent that. So you could put butter, you could put mayonnaise. Um, I could toast these, but I want to end up cooking these in the air fryer first. So what I'm going to do is slice all of these up and then freeze them. And hopefully I'm, I'm hoping that freezing them will keep the uh, pizza sauce from soaking into them while the pizza sauce is freezing. So um, I'm going to cut up the rest of these and we'll get them in the freezer and then we'll make some pizza sauce because everything's always better if you let it sit for a day. So. I'll be back when these are all cut up and in the freezer. All right, I have a quick and easy pizza sauce recipe. And if you've ever been wondering the difference between pizza sauce and pasta sauce, pizza sauce isn't cooked because you cook it in the oven when you bake the pizza. Pasta sauce is cooked because you're just putting it over cooked pasta. Um, so this is it. We're not gonna do anything with it other than combine these ingredients. So on my refrigerator is this card and um, what you need is a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And I'm gonna say, this Kirkland brand organic tomato sauce from, from uh, Costco is the best tomato sauce I have found. I love this stuff. This is in fact my last can. So somebody needs to get his butt in the car and go to Costco tomorrow to buy more because I don't like being without this. Um, it's the, it is the best stuff. So to this whole can, we are going to add half a teaspoon of granulated garlic, and I also get this from Costco, and I'm yeah, I'm getting down there, but this will last me at least to the end of the year. Um, then we need 
Very simple. A teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of basil, and a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And usually I mix my own Italian seasoning, uh, but I thought I would try this at from Walmart and because uh, it's it's a it's a dollar well it used to be a dollar now it's a dollar 12 um, which is a 12 percent increase so please tell me how that equals seven percent inflation it doesn't hmm anyway um it's not bad i usually like to mix my own but i thought i would try it and this is this is pretty good stuff so i'm going to speed things up and get this done and uh show you what i do with it because i am making this a day ahead it always helps to develop those flavors so uh, let's make this. Okay, and this is our pizza sauce. I mean, look at that. It is just gorgeous and it smells absolutely amazing. And you could just leave this in this bowl and um, and just cover it and put it in the fridge, but I, if I have something without a lid, it tends to spill. So I have these containers and I, I don't remember where I got them from, but I love them because they, they're, they, they're, they have a screw on top. And so um, if I knock it over, stuff isn't going to come out. So to make my life easier, um, I'm going to use a funnel and just, I believe in having tools. I believe in having the tools you need to get the job done um, with a minimum of fuss or discomfort. So I, I have a lot of funnels as well. So um, yeah, let's just get all of this out of here. Now, this pizza sauce, by the way, um, also serves as a really great dipping sauce. So if you make uh, breadsticks uh, for dinner one night, if you, you know, and you uh, want a sauce to dip them in, this works great. So if you have some of the sauce left over, just pop it in the freezer. And then the next time you make breadsticks, you've got dipping sauce. So this is, this is what we have now. It's filling up about halfway. So I'm going to throw this in the fridge. Tomorrow, this will have completely, uh, the flavors will have melded and combined. Our bread will be frozen. I will have shredded some cheese. I will have cooked some sausage. I will have sliced up some other things. And we'll make pizzas and throw them back in the freezer. So, see you tomorrow. All right. So, uh, here we are. I've taken these out of the freezer. Um, this is the ingredients that I have for them. So, here, of course, is our... Our beautiful sauce, which is in probably too deep a container, and I'm going to make a mess. We'll see. Um, I have some Italian sausage here, and I cooked. I got this from Aldi, and I cooked it up. And their Italian sausage is really good, but I added some extra fennel seeds just because I love fennel. Uh, I have some mozzarella cheese that I shredded up, and it looks. If it looks a little dusty, it's because I, I always put cheese in the freezer to firm it up before I shred it, and I left it in a little too long. Um, so it was almost all the way frozen, but it, 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 you can see it still works just fine. Uh, also from Aldi, I have this shredded Parmesan cheese, and I forget how much this was. This was a five ounce container, and I think it was around $3 or so. So I haven't really used this a lot, but um, mm, okay, that tastes pretty good. Um, back here I have delicious red onions, black olives, green peppers, uh, sliced up pepperoni. Um, this is the Hormel stuff I got from Sam's Club and I just I cut them into quarters because these pizzas aren't huge so I want to make sure to spread everything out. And then I have some canned mushrooms in the black olives and the canned mushrooms I drained really really well on paper towels because I don't want to get too much moisture on here. Um, and I always like canned mushrooms on pizza and people are always like well that you need to use the dry ones or the fresh ones. Yeah, right there's the clue. You need to use the fresh ones because those are higher quality, but they always dry out. So um, I'm going to get these guys out of the way and we're going to put this on a plate. And uh, I hope I did not ruin these or jinx myself because what I did was to keep the two halves from freezing back together. 
I, I put a piece of foil between them. Ah, perfect. Okay. Well, that works. And uh, I can save this and use this again, so I don't need to waste foil. So, um, so I'm going to reach in here with our spoon. And you never want to put too much pizza sauce on a pizza because then everything just slides around. So, um, so a layer of like that. That's why you want a really super flavorful pizza sauce because then you don't have to add a whole lot. So, I mean, I'm literally putting like a spoonful on here and just spreading it, spoonful and a half, I think I did, um, and just spreading it out. So, um, I am terrible at making pizzas. For some reason, I just, uh, I, I will put things on in the same layer, in the same order that uh, they do on the frozen pizzas and they never seem to come out right. Things just don't seem to stick, so. Um, and so what I'm going to do is get, get some cheese. And I, again, I'm weird. I don't like a ton of cheese on pizza. I know some people do. Um, so, and this is the nice thing about making your own. You can make these guys however you want to make them. Um, so if you like a lot of cheese, you can put a lot of cheese. And if you don't like a lot of cheese, like I don't, uh, you can go pretty light on the cheese. So I am just going to put a little bit here, not too much. Um, I, and I love cheese. I just don't like it when it melts. So I'm going to go in with our, some of our, um, already making a mess. There we go. Um, I'm going to go in with some of our sausage crumbles here. And this is why I put this on a plate because I knew I'm going to have some running off to the side here. There we go. It's a sausage avalanche. It's a sausalanche. Um, so yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? Fingers, pardon fingers. So um, it's always the best way to do things. So, well, I, I do like sausage on a pizza. So there we go. You can make things nice and even. I'm gonna go in with some onions now because we got some nooks and crannies to fill in. And these are red onions. They're sweet. They're delicious. Uh, oh my gosh, they're so yummy. And I think what I'm going to do is after I do all of these, I will do all of them except the last one. And then all of the stuff that ends up on this plate, um, I can just put uh, on the last pizza. So, And notice I cut these olives really thin. These are the Aldi black olives and I'm not super impressed with the quality. Probably won't buy these again, but I did cut them super thin because these are small pizzas and... Um, you know, it's real easy to overload them. And I've probably put too much sausage on these already, but um, we're gonna call these meat lovers uh, French bread pizzas, except these are sandwich buns, not French bread. So they're meat lovers uh, faux uh, French bread pizzas. So um, probably should have put the green peppers on before the pe olives. Um, you know, so we will switch up the order of our bowl here and I will get it right next time. Uh, have a process. Work the process, adjust the process until you get it working the way you like. And, um, you know, I don't know what it is with frozen pizzas. I'm assuming they put the uh, uh, toppings on fairly evenly distributed uh, in the factory. But for some reason, when you get them home, it's like they went through a seismic zone and everything's always shifted to one side. So um, I think mushrooms should be next. Or maybe, no, we'll go with the, we'll go with the. Yeah, see, I, the mushrooms will get covered up by the pepperoni. So, um, and I love mushrooms so much. And some people do not like mushrooms. And uh, so if you don't like mushrooms, you don't put mushrooms. If you love mushrooms, like I love mushrooms, you're going to put a lot of mushrooms on here. So mushrooms in every bite. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm putting so many mushrooms on here um, that remember, I still have t 10 more of these to do, I'm probably gonna run out of mushrooms. And I know I'm gonna run out of black olives, but that's okay. Um, some of these will just be a little different than the rest. So I am going to, this is really good pepperoni, by the way, so you don't need a ton of it. Um, you will see a little bit of fat out of it too. So, um, and then I'm just gonna to top it with uh, some of this Parmesan and, um, then I'm just going to put these guys back in the freezer 
and, and let the toppings freeze. The bottoms are frozen. Um, I'm just going to let the toppings freeze and package them up. So I'm going to get the rest of these done. I'm going to get them in the freezer and we'll come back tomorrow and see what they look like when they're frozen. See you then. And here we are. Here are our frozen pizzas. Um, you can tell they're frozen because look, they're rock hard. Um, I put them on these little sheet trays so I could get them in and out of the freezer easily. And you can see I'm starting to spill things. So what I'm going to do is get a sheet of a bit of cling film here. And I'm just going to try to get off a square. And I'm going to lay it down. And I don't know how well you can see that. Um, for once, we're, we're grateful for reflections. So I'm going to put a pizza diagonally in the middle of it. And the little bits that fell off the top, we will put back on. Um, although everything is cooked, so you could also eat that. So I'm going to wrap this up. Kind of like you would do an envelope. And... Um, there you go. There is your homemade mini French bread pizza in the oven, ready to throw in the oven or air fryer. And if you need the directions, uh, I will put a link to the video where I cook similar things up in the air fryer down below. Um, if your freezer is like mine, okay, uh, and it, the minute you put something in there, it, it, it wants to freeze or burn it, you can double wrap this in plastic. Um, you could put another piece going the other way or you could uh, put these in a big zip bag or um, the, the, they make these, okay? These are food saver bags that are reusable. You can see there's a little, there's a little thingy here. Um, so what you do is you unzip it. And I love these things because uh, as long as you put food in here that's already wrapped in something, uh, you don't have to worry about washing the bag. If you put things in here that aren't wrapped, then you have to wash the bag. So I'm going to try to squeeze as much air out of it as possible before I zip it all the way up, just so that I don't have to overwork my, my food sealer. Um, and then what you do is you just, see, here we go. This is, this, is the, this is the magical part. It's got this little attachment here. And you put it here, and you press the uh, start button. And you can see it's sucking the air right out of there. And you let it go until it stops. It's not that loud, I don't think, is it? Okay, well, it's not stopping for reasons I don't know. Usually if it doesn't stop, it might mean that you don't have that zip sealed all the way um, and it's sucking air in through there so we'll try that again oh yeah see see how it sounds way different now yeah there we go um so there you go and when you're ready for a pizza you just take this out of the zipper and take it out of the plastic wrap and you can see it's actually kind of shrunk the plastic wrap down onto it. And this will keep something from getting uh, freezer burn. And these things, you can reuse them over and over and over again. And it doesn't say um, how long you can use them, but uh, they do make this size and then they make uh, a larger size that you could fit, you know, three or four pizzas in. And the advantage of this is you take one out, you seal it back up and you're good to go. So. There are our frozen homemade mini French bread pizzas with bread that was on clearance at Walmart and homemade ingredients for a fraction of the cost. There you go. All right, so here are our mini French bread pizzas in this freezer bag. And I'm gonna take, I have two of them. Uh, I think I'd mentioned before, but it's usually, if you're gonna cook these, um, this is completely reusable and I don't have to wash it because these are wrapped in plastic. Yay. Um, I think I mentioned before that if you're gonna cook these in like an air fryer or a toaster oven, it's generally best to let them sit out uh, for a little bit. And these have been sitting out for about five minutes. So um, this one is going to go in a 350 degree toaster oven for about 10 minutes. And look, just like a real frozen pizza, um, stuff is falling off onto the plastic. So I'm gonna get him on our well-seasoned rack and put this Parmesan cheese back on top. And he will go in the longest amount of time. 
So this we will throw away and I will get this one out. And um, oh, here we go. And uh, he's gonna go, oh, losing pepperoni already there. Right, he is going to go directly into our air fryer tray, which looks like that. Oh, already losing cheese. So I'm gonna get these two guys baked and we'll be back in about 10 minutes. All right, so it's actually been about four minutes, I checked, and uh, our air fryer guy is looking like this, so I'm just gonna take him out. Um, and, oops, I can do this without burning myself. There is actually a piece of pepperoni down there. I don't know if you can see him, he's hiding. Um, so I think if I were gonna make these just for the air fryer, uh, I would probably, um, Put the pepperoni on the bottom so it doesn't blow off but yeah let's these are perfectly cooked all the cheese is melted oh can you hear that we have a nice crispy crust on the bottom of that just yeah there we go so i'm just going to put all this guy on a plate here um because it is dinner time So yeah, there we go. Um, mm, 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 mm. So I'm losing bits and pieces all over the place here. Well, let's try this. There we go. Bon appetit. Mm. That is so good. That sauce is seasoned perfectly. There's not too much of it. The sauce, they actually did the science uh, a couple of decades ago. The sauce is what causes you to burn your mouth. So um, you want to be careful with getting too much of that on there. So this actually took about four minutes. I double checked. You could have let it go another minute and get some more crisp on it, but I didn't want to risk burning it. Um, but our other guy is in the uh, toaster oven, so I'll go get him out in a couple of minutes and we'll see what he looks like. See you then. All right, so our toaster oven version is done. And um, I'm going to try to get him on a on the cutting board here without burning my hands. Uh, that's the trick. Um, there we go. So again, uh, he's just beautifully done. Just look at that. That crust is nice and crispy on the bottom. So we're just gonna cut him up and um, probably could have left him in a couple more minutes, but he's heated all the way through. Um, I just, I just don't think that the toaster oven gets as hot as the air fryer because of the convection part of it. Mmm, 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 mmm. So, so good. Oh, mmm. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I have to go get a beer. It's dinner time. And that's it, folks. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, links to uh, free printable copies of any recipes here are down below in the show notes. Please like, comment, or if you'd like to see more of this kind of material, subscribe. As always, um, please stay safe, eat great food, and power to the proletariat. We'll see you next time.